I'm Marilyn Manson. I have the mark of a new age that I'm trying to make sure happens to bring some life back into rock and roll. What I did is something that everyone enjoys and I'd like to share it with everyone. I think Manson is one of those, you know, love or hate characters. Sick. Crazy. Out there. He's amazing. People buy into the whole myth of Marilyn Manson, you know, he's, he's evil, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a priest of the devil and all this kind of thing. Um, but honestly, he's just a really quite an intelligent guy and the people who understand him are his biggest fans. <laughs> It's amazing. So intelligent, stimulating, mentally. And he never just stays with one thing, which is amazing. Because it's so hard to actually evolve as an artist when you've got so many things around you saying what to do here, do this, do that, do that. And he's always doing his own thing. He always finds his own people to talk to, his own... He's just amazing.
Marilyn Manson's involvement with the Church of Satan is a very interesting situation. Prior to the death of Anton LaVey, the founder and the head of the Church of Satan, um, there was a lineup of different people who were vying to take over the, the church. Um, and there is a good argument that Anton LaVey made uh, Manson the head of the Church of Satan really almost to infuriate and confront the people who were lining up to replace him. Marilyn Manson's involvement in the Church of Satan has undoubtedly um, been a great publicity coup for him. I speak about hate and I show the reflection of hate. A person's worth is measured by not only how many people love them, but how many people hate them. I think our fans are some of the only few intelligent people in America and everybody else are the ones that are missing the point. A lot of my previous work was about battles that I've been fighting with myself, with the world, with religion, with politics. This record is about establishing a new religion and politic within the art and within the music. The most interesting and the most exciting part about it is the exhilaration of the creation, which is captured in the record. It's that feeling of shoplifting or speeding. It's the album, you can hear me discovering this new language that I've kind of created in the music because a lot of the vocal takes are the first ones because it had something that I didn't want to try and do better. Trent Reznor, the, uh, the, the man who kind of mentored him um, in the early 90s, um, that you can see um, a lot of uh, similarities in the darkness of the music, um, the kind of hard edge in the production. Um, Manson's music definitely got a lot more edgy when Reznor was involved. Um, kind of a more unconscious um, influence, I would say, would be Alice Cooper, um, only because of the kind of the shock rock uh, angle that he uh, that that he used in his live shows. You know, the makeup, the the you know mock executions, um, uh, anything that could be perceived as an onstage horror show, Cooper did it. And Manson has just basically taken it to the next level, made it slicker, and brought it into the new millennium.
Um, when I first met Brian was back in uh, the summer of 92, actually at a Beastie Boys concert. He was there with his, um, his first kind of long-term girlfriend and name withheld, of course. And he was with her, I was with a bunch of my friends, and we had seen each other before just because of the music scene or whatever. And at the show, we kind of made eye contact and whatever, but he was with his girlfriend, and I wasn't gonna try and pursue anything. So after the show, his band was playing later on that week, at the weekend or whatever, at Washington Square. And uh, he was passing out flyers for that show. And as I passed, he made sure that he came up to me and he's like, hey, you know, what's up, blah, blah, blah. Here's um, a flyer for my next show. I really want you to go. Um, if you can, bring a paper airplane and a bottle of Jack Daniels. So the next weekend after that was the, um, the Slammy Awards. And he was with Jordy at the time, hanging out at the button. I was there an another time with my friends. Ran into him then. Jordy and I were friends before. Brian and I were friends. So he introduced me to him. and. He was, you know, I gotta get your number, and you know, I'm going away to Tampa this weekend for a show, so here's, here's my number, I'll call you, and we ended up getting together after that. What are you gonna do? I have to go to school, I'm gonna go somewhere in my house. How are you staying here, or are you gonna go home? I don't know. Something, Fuck, something I don't like know. dry, something like rap music, kind Fuck, of like, three, like, I don't like know a real that. tap. Like, and that's why I'll never be really bitter towards him in any way just because I got to see so much. I don't, I don't even think he knew how good he had it. For a band to get their very first tour ever, to tour with Nine Inch Nails, who at the time was the, at their peak, you know, and open up for them, you know, I don't even think they knew how good they had it. I mean, no other bands, I don't think, have ever been able to, to claim that as their first tour, and I think, I think that's really cool. I've learned so much from him through, through all the years we were together, good and bad things, you know. Might, he might have not been the best influence on me, you know, a lot of people might say. He didn't do the best things to me, but we still, I mean, shared a lot of things that were good, and if people were ever to ask if I was ever mad about anything, no way. No way.
before Marilyn Manson, the gothic scene was very different to it is today. Marilyn Manson isn't the originator of goth. He, he certainly, he certainly probably came into the genre eight to ten years after it had been invented at the Batcave Club, which is where it really developed from. Uh, Manson, though, took it in a new direction. He didn't follow the traditional roots of goth, which had been very guitar-based with bands such as The Damned, Bauhaus, Sisters of Mercy. He took it in a totally different direction. He took it more in the direction of bands like Ministry and the Revolting Cox. And one of the things you find is that style-wise, prior to uh, Manson's involvement in goth, it was a very different style of dress. It was a dress, dress that was very much in the style of the vampire. Uh, for men and for women, frilly shirts, long black hair, um, large long length coats, very, very dainty almost in its style of dress. Subsequently, uh, to, Ma to Manson becoming the predominant figure in the goth movement, the style has changed. It's become much more clumsy, it's become much bigger in the way of dress, much more extreme. You, you can look at this by the way that Manson, Manson and his makeup, or Manson in his shoes. His shoes is probably the best example. You know, prior to Manson, goths would wear very dainty Edwardian shoes, pointed shoes, Cuban heels. Subsequent to Marilyn Manson, you now tend to find shoes that are very large, like large boots, with soles that are probably six, eight inches high. Uh, and heels at six or eight inches high. It's very much changed. He's changed the whole direction of the Gothic movement.
this is a, this is a man who uses uh, visual imagery, lyrics, and music to unsettle people he thinks are too comfortable in their in their roles in life. Um, and I think he's quite an important person, particularly in American culture. Not so much here in the UK. Uh, I think people take him with a pinch of salt. Um, we've seen a lot of stuff like this before and we don't really feel the need to be um, annoyed or angered by it because we understand he's a musician, um, he's not trying to kill anyone um, and uh, he is actually um, pretty intelligent with the way he goes about things. Okay. I believe for, for, for Manson it was his uh, relationship with um, Nine Inch Nails uh, founder, frontman uh, Trent Reznor. Um, in 1993, Reznor signed um, Manson to his Nothing Records label, um, and that's when funding, um, organisation, everything came into the Manson uh, setup, and he could really start reaching a lot of people all at once.
Yeah, if my microphone new, happened, I can hardly hear you. Yeah, I got a mic. Okay, good. Your new album, uh, Mechanical Animals, due out tomorrow, symbolizes a lot about drugs, e and even in the booklet itself. Um, do you feel that the media associate your album with drugs a lot more than usual? Well, the, the album uh, has to do with uh, drugs is often used as a metaphor besides the obvious term. And uh, while writing it and after going through the transformation of Antichrist Superstar, I began to feel again emotions for the first time, strangely enough. And the more I began to feel, the more and more the world started to look like mechanical animals. And that was the theme that started running through that. And, uh, and I was kind of studying in my life and in other people around me, and particularly in Hollywood, how we numb ourselves and make ourselves less human and more mechanical. And, uh, I mean, if they want to attach to the drug thing, I mean, that's fine. I mean, that, that's been part of my life, you know, it's not something that I hide or, or, or deny. What do you attribute that sort of feeling again? It's, it's probably worse than uh, what I felt last year. You know, I think I put myself through a lot of physical pain to make up for, for no emotional pain. Yeah. And uh, that's what a lot of people told me, kind of in retrospect, is that when I moved to Hollywood a year ago, I started to repair myself in a lot of ways. And this record lyrically documents that repair. Jeff Hamilton is here, an actual youth pastor. Jeff, what's your question for Marilyn? Actually, one of the things that uh, I admire about this whole process is, has been your transparency from early interviews through these albums, the book, and uh, you're talking about metaphors being uh, uh, in this particular album and, and a return to realness and feeling in your life. What is that? What does that cost you then uh, emotionally? What does that cost you uh, relationally to move from that place of numbness to a place of uh, feeling and interaction and processing with people in your life? That's a long question. Well, it's, I mean, strange, strangely enough, uh, it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. You know, I set out to be something superhuman, something the greatest thing I could be with Antichrist Superstar, and what I didn't figure into that was uh, vulnerability was a part of it, and that was something that I was not acknowledging. You know, I didn't want to feel. Now that I am, it's, it's. Uh, I'm sure everybody's been through. You know, I mean, it's, it's. It's what life is, and uh, it's crazy. People it's love you. It's like now. being, it's like a rebirth. It's like being an infant. Everything's bright. Everything's very painful, and uh, so in some ways, I've gotten back my innocence that I was looking for. You know, you get some breasts, and everybody loves you. <laughs> um, you can't hate them. Yeah, hell no. Especially yours. Look better than anybody else's. Um, Mechanical Animals also um, sort of seems like it would uh, entail these people who, who do follow, and now that you're sort of aware of that. Um, it's interesting because we have some diehard fans, Allison and Jeanette here, who have carved Marilyn Manson, and you've, I'm sure, met them before. Yeah, they're friends of mine. So how do you take to someone who would follow you to the point of self-mutilation? Is that sort of contradicting your own message of this don't follow, don't follow the status quo? It depends because I can't uh, say exactly what they're thinking, but to me when I look at them and I consider them friends, uh, it's their way of identifying, you know, their way of being a part of uh, something because the rest of the world has shut them off in some way. Um, and it's their way of expressing themselves and uh, I'm not one to judge how people express themselves. Right. Is there any, this is going way too nice, is there anybody here who's not a fan? Anybody have the balls to say that? You're right here with them. <laughs> Not you, Pogo. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, my name's Rob Hayes. I'm a, a senior at Princeton University. Um, and I'm also the president of Campus Crusade for Christ um, there on campus. Um, I'd have to say I'm not necessarily a fan of, of your whole message. Um, but again, this was something that I found interesting, is that if um, in my own intellectual pursuits, um, I find myself and happiness and joy in being a Christian, um, yet you preach that, you know, there is no God and that God does not exist. Um, I mean, that's, is that that's hypocritical? Not, that's that's I mean, half true. You know, I, I'm more if I uh, against, myself, against the guilt that Christian, Christianity imposes, but um, I think that God exists in art and there's more spirituality in music than you can find in religion a lot of times, but I'm not one to condemn anyone's pursuit of God or, or happiness or anything like that. I just think that uh, uh, we're raised to feel very guilty for being ourselves and, and that's a, a large part of what Christianity stands for. But I think there's great and valuable things uh, in the Bible 
I, if anything, Antichrist Superstar was a lot of parallels with my life with uh, someone like Lucifer. Mechanical Animals is a lot more parallels between me and Jesus Christ. So, you know, I found a different way to relate to things. But that doesn't mean that I'm uh, going to be a born-again Christian. It just means that I can find some some valid points in your religion. I don't think that everything about it is wrong. That's been a huge misconception too since day one. People thought that you were out there like protesting Sunday school. You've never done that. <laughs> I kicked I kicked the Sunday school teacher. Well, actually, when I was in Who hasn't? when I was in Christian school, I had these things made out of uh, a ruler and a rubber band with crayons, yeah. and we were shooting them at each other. And uh, the principal's wife, who was the the Bible teacher. I had it under my desk and I accidentally shot her in the crotch. And <laughs> so I have reacted violently towards those sort of things. Hence the song. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Marilyn Manson, Frigate Ramirez and Polo. Thanks for watching Manson TV. So long.